When discussing Smash Ultimate, players highlight its massive yet diverse roster. Many also consider it the most balanced game of the series. However, not every character was created equally. Every fighting game has low tiers with glaring problems, but they typically make up flaws by striving in other aspects. An example being Little Mac's recovery paired with his power and speed. But certain characters even struggle with their supposed strengths. These fighters have mechanics or design choices integrated into their movesets that make me wonder if they were made bad on purpose. First, let's talk about one of Ultimate's most unique characters. Bowser Jr. is an amalgamation of awkward hitboxes and shaky mechanics. Auto-canceling aerials is a fundamental tech for applying pressure in neutral. If you land with an aerial at a certain point in its animation, your landing lag will be reduced significantly. If you try to auto-cancel Bowser Jr.'s forward air between frames 2 and 34 of the attack, you are stuck with this landing hitbox and 16 frames of lag. If landed, there's a potential for follow-ups, but getting the hitbox in neutral is challenging and you're better off going for safer combo routes. While I can go about his inconsistent multi-hits, it's better to talk about his two different hurt boxes. If you hit his clown cart, he'll take slightly less damage and not back, while hitting him will deal more. Whether this quirk was beneficial or not depends on the matchup, but many meta-relevant character neutrals are made up of throwing out aerials, which will hit Junior most of the time. Another thing to know is when getting grabbed and thrown. This will prioritize his Junior's hitbox, meaning he dies earlier to kill throws and command grabs. Most projectiles in Ultimate get utility from being safe moves to throw out and apply pressure in neutral. Junior's projectiles are versatile when used correctly, however, getting them out is a completely different story. His down B, Mecha Koopa, takes 48 frames to become active, and his cannonball comes out at frame 37 uncharged. He is able to act out both of these moves on frames 67 and 72 respectively, making both awful moves to use in neutral. Even when fully charged, Cannonball only starts killing most characters around 130%. And to top all of that off, he has, without a doubt, the worst getup attack in the game. When doing a getup attack from the ledge, you're granted a large amount of invincibility to go alongside your attack, but Junior's iframes go away about halfway through the move, leaving him extremely vulnerable. Getup attacks are able to be punished with good spacing, but no other character can get spiked for whiffing one. Next up, we have the Hero King, Marth. His sword's famous tipper forces players to space carefully, as its sweet spot is located, well, at the tip. By landing it, you deal more damage and knockback than the rest of your sword, which is much weaker, as opposed to Lucina, whose sword does the same damage regardless of where you hit it. Consistency is vital at high levels, which is why she is always placed above him on tier lists. When looking at his hitboxes, many of the sour and sweet spots overlap. If you hit somebody in this area, it always prioritizes their sour spot. Tipper confirms can lead to extremely early stocks, but the overlapping hitboxes make them harder and more inconsistent than they need to be. When comparing Marsh's sweet spot mechanics to Roy's, one is undoubtedly better than the other. His playstyle rewards getting in as close as possible, and Marth requires him to be at an extremely specific distance, which isn't as effective in a fast-paced game like Ultimate. In Smash 4, Marth had a frame 5 jab, which allowed him to confirm into many of his sweet spots. Despite this being removed, many other characters that focus on spacing and patient play have fast, close-up options that lead to kill moves reliably. And I don't really think we need to talk about melee, Marth. Lastly, we have one of Ultimate's most anticipated characters. Banjo has no shortage of non-functional hitboxes. His neutral air is incomplete, as it's very easy for characters to pop out of it. Drag downs are a staple of multi-hit aerials, but Banjo's inconsistent hitboxes make it very unpractical. The move has 10 frames to start up and is minus 13 on shield, which isn't very safe when compared to similar multi-hit nares. Up Smash is a fast multi-hit that kills off the top if it connects. The scoop hitbox isn't very good and the attack itself has very little range. Sometimes you could be clipping inside of Banjo and will still miss. Banjo's up air is definitely his jankiest move. The side hitbox that look like they combo into the final hit, don't. They instead send to the side, which is an awful situation for juggle scenarios, making his advantage state even more inconsistent. The side hitbox does have some niche follow-ups into Wonder Wing, although you're better off going for bomb combos as they're much more reliable. 
Wonder Wing is a weird move. Many players have noted its versatility as a powerful invincible burst option. The move has interesting mechanics when interacting with certain projectiles. It completely bypasses most, but Side B will freeze when colliding with a projectile with a hurt box, leaving him vulnerable. Notable examples are Gyro, Luma, Pikmin, Gordo, Minecart, and Remote Bomb. These characters aren't the worst in the game, and they still have a lot of potential to make big upsets. Do you think any of these characters are viable at the highest of level? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Also, follow us on Twitter at JuniorHawk underscore and Noah the Fat. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.